combinational logic. I skipped this. I forgot to cover this. And this is a super important part. We're going to be learning about digital electronics. And first thing you need to know is that, let me clear this out. Oops, no, I don't want to save it. All right. The first thing you should know is that in a regular circuit, uh, analog circuit, by the way, let's say you have resistors and you have a resistor and you have a resistor. And even if this was a 5 volt, which is sort of a digital logic level, 5 volt battery, that means that the ground side is 0 and this side is plus 5. So that technically this wire is plus 5 and this wire right here is 0 volts and this one is plus 5 volts. So technically these two wires do have logic levels of what we would call a 1 and a 0. So this one's on. By the way, uh, the logic levels are either high or they're low. But you could call them 1 or 0. You could also call them on or off. You could also call them um, 5 volts and 0 volts. You could also call them, I think there's something else. There's probably another one. I'm just not thinking of it right now. Um, anyway, so these are the most popular ways. There's another one I'm thinking of, but uh, two Fs there. But please look that this is not a digital circuit. This is not digital. That's not. The reason being is, yes, you have logic levels of 0 and 1 here. But remember that when you have a resistor, you have a voltage drop here. So that this might be like 3 volts now. And this whole wire is 3 volts. But this one ends up being like, let's say, 1.5 volts. And then this is 0. So we have a 1.5 difference here a 1.5 difference here because 1.5 and 3 and then this one has a 2 volt difference here so if you put your multimeter here you'll see there's 2 volts here you'll see there's one and a half and here you'll see there's one and a half and a total drop of 5 volts but this is an analog in a digital circuit every single wire you find so whenever it goes through stuff anywhere there's a wire coming out every wire is either 0 volts or 5 volts in other words, they're all going to be zeros or they're ones. They're all highs or lows, on or off. And that's important. All right. Now, um, now that we know that, let's come back here and let's look at a worksheet. Here's a PowerPoint, so we can open it with Google Slides. I recommend you do the same thing if you want to look at this again. Let's wait for it to load. Let's go to present. Here it is. So, combinational logic means you put inputs in and then it outputs stuff. And sequential logic means you put inputs in, there's outputs, but there's feedback and whatnot. We're doing combinational logic right now. Here's a dumb smiley face. That's not a real logic symbol. But in general, you would have inputs, you would have outputs. And the output does have a logic expression. And there you can make every every logic symbol has its own truth table. We'll see right now. So let's go over some real ones, okay? Here's a real one. This is called AND gate, capital A-N-D, all caps. It's called an AND gate. And the reason they call it AND gate, and this is the way it looks. It always looks like this. Got it? Please pay attention to the flat back and the round bullet front looking thing. And the name of this uh, thing is called an AND gate. Specifically, this particular AND gate is a 74LS08N. Uh, this is the exact brand and model and everything and the exact type of gate it is. But really, generically, it's called an AND gate. They call it that because this output, you see this uh, Z, it will only be one. So it will only be on if both X and Y are on. You can see that by looking at this truth table. Note that the Z, the output right here, this wire coming out, is always off, off, and off, and the only time it's on is when both of the inputs, X and Y, right here, are on. That's because this and this both have to be on or it won't be on, and that's what we call an AND gate. Uh, we uh, Normally, we write it like this in this class. Got it? So the two are multiplied. Do you guys see the multiplication right here? The multiply, the multiply. We just draw, we draw it like this. 
and there's three ways to write it. We just put it like this. So if you see two letters multiplied, it means and, okay? So if you see an X and a Y like that, that's why we call it X and Y. That's X and Y. And that's how you represent this uh, output. Here's an OR gate. Please pay attention to the shape. Look at it for a second. This one does not have a flat back. It's arced. And the front is pointy. It's got a little point to it. So it's very similar like a bullet, but with a point. It's not rounded front. This is called an OR gate because the output is one when one or the other or both are on. So notice that it's always on except when both are off. That's the only way to turn this off. So this wire right here, this output will always be on as long as one of these are on or even if both of them are on. How do you represent that equation? Or what we call, it's not an equation, what do we call that? We call that a logic expression. We just put x plus y. Plus means or. x or y. That's how we say that. So if I had to represent this symbol, we would just say x or y. The truth table looks like this. The machine, the, the output right here is always on as long as there's an on somewhere on the inputs right here. Inverter is the easiest one. It only has one input, so it has a super little tiny truth table. All it does is do what it says, invert. We usually, we just, uh, we call this INV, capital INV. And look at the, look at the expression. If your input is X, then the output Z is equal to not X, right? Remember the little not sign? The little, the not sign above? So if your input is zero, the output will be one. If your input is one, your output will be zero. All this does is invert it. Pay attention to that bubble. That's what that bubble means. You guys see that little tiny bubble? That bubble means to invert something. So we put a little arrow, meaning the flow is this way. We put a bubble. And what happens is that means that any wire you put here, it will invert it. So if this is a one, this is a zero. If this was a zero, this will be a one. This little symbol inverts it. We call this logic AOI, and ORs and inverters. That's the kind of logic we're going to be using in this class for some time. We're just going to use everything AOI. Everything's going to be an and or an inverter. That's all we need to build anything we need. So we can build all kinds of stuff just using these only. Later on, I'll show you guys how to substitute these and use other circuits, but for the longest time, we're just going to be using and ORs and inverters. Look at those pictures here. Come back to this PowerPoint if you ever want to see that. Combinational logic examples. Watch this, folks. Let's say you're building this little car. You guys see this person with two kids in the car right here? Uh, the buzzer, remember the, there's a buzzer in your car, right, that warns you about stuff? When do we want it to buzz you? If the door is open or the key is in the ignition and the seatbelt's not buckled. That's the only time we want it to, to buzz. So if the key is in the, if the door is open, anytime the door is open, we want the buzzer to buzz. We also want the key, if the key is in the ignition and the seatbelt is not buckled, we want it to buzz then too, like beep, 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 you know, like bug you. So look at this. We have three inputs, a seatbelt sensor, a key sensor, a door sensor. The buzzer should be buzzing with a one or a zero. It's not buzzing. So right here, uh, oh, and right here, you have to define this. Anytime you do a project, you should always define what is what. Do you guys see these definitions on the side? Seatbelt. If it's a zero, the seatbelt's not buckled. A one, the seatbelt's buckled. Key. Zero. The key is not in the ignition. One, the key is in the ignition. Door. The door is not open. The door is open. Buzzer. Zero is buzzers off. One is buzzer. So they defined all those zeros and ones for you here. So here, the buzzer's not on. Why? Because the seat belt is not buckled. Uh-oh. But there's no key and the door's not open anyway, so the buzzer shouldn't be open. The seat belt's not buckled. Uh-oh. Should it be buzzing? Uh, well, the key's not in the ignition, so no. Oh, but the door is open. One. So it should be buzzing. So do you guys follow this table? Let's do a couple more here. Uh, let's look at this one. The seat belt's not on. Maybe we should be buzzing. Oh, yes. The key's in the ignition. Heck yeah, the bu the, it should be buzzing. See, the door's closed. We're good. But the problem is there's no seatbelt buckled yet, and the key is in the ignition. So yes, the buzzer should be on. 
Uh, here's one where the seatbelt's not buckled and the key's in the ignition. And even worse, the door's open. So definitely the buzzer's going to be going, right? Because remember we said when the, the buzzer should be on up here. Uh, here we go. The seatbelt's buckled. Okay, we're fine. The key's not in the ignition. The door's closed. Sure, the buzzer shouldn't be on. Your seatbelt's on. The key's not in the ignition. The door's closed. Nothing's going on that's dangerous. Seatbelt's buckled. The key's in the ignition. But that should be good. Oh, but there's a problem. The door's open, so it should be buzzing you. And then the last two. I won't move the mouse down there, but let's just look at the second to the last row. 110. Seatbelt is buckled. Good. Key's in the ignition. Okay, that's fine. They're buckled. The door is closed. That's fine. That's normal operation. Zero, no buzzer. That's fine. Uh, so th that second to last one, the buzzer should not be buzzing. Why? Because they have their seatbelt on. The key's in the ignition, but their seatbelt's on, and the door is closed. So that's fine. The last one, all ones, the buzzer should be going off. And the reason being is the seatbelt's buckled, yes. The key's in ignition, yes. But the door is open, so it should be buzzing. That's the one there. That's how it looks right here. That's how it looks. Um, I can, we'll explain that more later, but right now you don't need to know that just yet. And we can walk over all the circuitry like that. We'll, we'll worry about that later. We're not going to worry about that just yet. So right now, what are we going to worry about? So let's go to the assignment. And it says, using a circuit design software, that's multi-sim, enter the inverter gate and test the circuit. So build this right here. Now, i got to show you how to build that right here, okay? So let me do that now. It's not going to look exactly the same because this online circuit software is a little different. Let's build this. I need five volts and a ground. In other words, I need a one and a zero. That's in, in class, we would build it like this, exactly. But because we're doing it online, um, the way I found to do it was I would go to logic right here. You see digital stuff, it says digital. And I would just grab a digital constant and I would click here. And then if you want, you can copy it and do another one. Then I would click on one of them Oh, double click on it and then change the state toggle the state see when I click it pay attention to this one or zero it toggles back and forth so I'm gonna switch that one to a zero this one to a one then we're gonna get the switch that we used we're not using a single pole single throw switch we're using a single pole double throw SPDT single pole double throw let's use it right here and we're only gonna need one for this one and we're, let me invert this there we go and I'm going to connect the one there and the zero here. And this is just a cool switch. Um, uh, when I click it, uh, I can flip the state. Do you guys see that? So this wire right here, the wire coming out here, is uh, it's going to change. And I'll show you in a minute. So let's grab a inverter right here. Be careful. Don't get the buffer. You want the inverter. So let's click the inverter, and we're going to click here. And uh, right here, we need an LED. Uh, what do they use in the class? They use a like a little light. Those are called probes uh, in the software, but I don't know that this has any. So when I go to indicators right here, right here, I don't see it. So I'm just going to put an LED, and then I'm going to wire this to the LED. And then, of course, I have to put a, re a resistor, right? Every time you put an LED, we should put a resistor. Usually, we put it before right here. I wonder if I can do that. Yeah, there we go. That worked. And then uh, let's change this to 330. That's a more standard amount for these. You can put 500. I think that works, too. Now, this is the positive side coming from here. When this is positive, it'll go here. And so this always should be tied to a negative. You can tie it back here if you want. So if you want, you can just bring it back here to that. Or you could just go get, I think I think this should work, digital constant. If you just want to put this here and toggle the state to zero, make sure that this is a ground, so it's a zero. And then this is a one. 
So now let's push simulate. Notice my, notice it's on right now. Why is it on? My switch is coming from the zero, which goes into an inverter and switches it to a one, and now it turns on. If I, let's see if I can switch this, there we go. I clicked it, now it's off. Why is this light off? So look, if I can click this, see it turns on, off. So let's turn it off. This is an on switch, this is on, this is five volts high and it's coming from here, and that should turn the light on, except it goes through an inverter, which turns it off. So this is inverting. So when I go one, it actually turns off, and we're right here. So when you have to fill out your table right here, let's see, let's make sure X is, is zero. So X is right here, the switch, right? So let's make sure that's a zero. It is, see, it leads to the zero. Okay, we're good. Then we go back to classwork and what do we put for Z Z is on I can see that so right here for the assignment we'll put a one for the one let's go do that there now X is a one and our output is zero right here see this little switch it's off the light is off so right here we'll put a zero then you build this one you build this one, fill out the truth table, and lastly, you're going to build this one. This one's going to require three. Just pay attention that ground is zero. Switch your little toggle to zero. And switch this to one. So it looks exactly like this, except this will be a one, that will be a zero, and your LED, you'll have to put a resistor and, and tie it to a zero. And then you just need these circuits right here. And then you'll fill this out right here switching each seatbelt key and door seatbelt key and door to the proper proper switches so first they'll all be off they'll all they'll all be going to zero like it is now the next one you'll turn only the door on so only this one you'll switch on and then see if it turns on the led or not and that's all there is to it so if you want to see how to do two uh, i'll do that one for you i'll do a, a an and gate so let's uh d let's stop the simulation Let's delete this out, and uh, we'll go here, and we're going to get an AND gate. There it is. And then do a two input. Got it? A two input, not any of these weird ones. So just a normal two input. And then I need another switch. Single pull, double throw. And I'm going to have to flip it by pushing this button right here because they're facing the wrong way. There we go. And one switch is going here, and the other switch is going here because this one has two inputs. So I have one input and two inputs. This one right here, the notice the bottom one on this switch goes to the zero. I'll do the same thing here so I don't confuse myself. The top, the top switch, so here's the switch, the top one goes to the five volts. So you'll have to kind of cross some boundaries and get it there. So now I'm done. Don't forget your LED, your output is going to go to a resistor, to an LED, to a zero. That way that this works. Whenever this is high, this will be zero and this will turn on. If this is zero, zero and zero will not turn this LED on because that's not how LEDs work. They need a five volts here, positive. Oh, that's the other one, positive and negative. That's the other way to see it, positive and negative, I guess. I forgot that on my original chart. Um, so this one's ready to go. So let's see. An AND gate. Remember, both these have to be on for the light to turn on. See that light? That is the only way for this to turn on, is that these both have to be on. And right now they are. This one goes up, which leads to the positive. This one is up, which also leads to the positive. If I flip any of them off or put them in any other scenario, they'll turn off. See? Off? It's off. Turns on. Turn this one off. Yep, it's off. And what if they're both off? Yep, it's still off. The only way to turn on is this one has to be on and this one has to be on. So pretty much when you fill that out in class, you're going to say that both of them off is zero. This one off is zero still. These, this scenario is zero. But if they're both on, this will be a one right here. So fill this chart out, fill this chart out, fill this chart out, turn those into me, and fill this chart out and turn it into me. What I want for you to turn into me, it says on your assignment right here, and I'll explain it to you, is that I want this, 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 and this, so pretty much the assignment done, but I also want 
cropped a screenshot of this when you do it here. Okay, so I want to see that here on this multi-sim, you take a screenshot that you do do this right here so that I know you've really done this right here correctly because they tell you what the expected is. I want yours to come out the same. And that's all there is.